Get us squared. <clears throat> Actually, I don't think we even need to do that anymore. Okay. We're live. We're live. In the places, on the things. On the things and in the places. Amazing. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. If this is your uh, first go around with us, uh, please just in the comment box, let us know that it's your first time. We'll, we'll uh, give you a little shout out, say hi. Uh, we know a bunch of people have joined. We never celebrated, by the way, the fact that we had 20,000 people in this group yet. We just kind of like yeah. went over this number, which is amazing. There's 20,000 old souls and seekers in this group. Like that is just astounding. We've more than, I think we've like tripled since. Since really October. taking our, since taking our group seriously. Yeah, like I think we were at eight thousand, something like that. Yeah. so we've grown wow. by about twelve thousand in the last year. Wow, amazing! Well, yeah. that's uh, it's a huge, huge benchmark. Uh, it's funny because we were celebrating like fourteen and fifteen, and we just got to this beautiful round number, just went over it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, welcome to all the all of you that are new. Hey, Alex, what's up? Um, and yeah, we just really, really want to welcome you here. This is an amazing, amazing family. Uh, of like-minded souls who are up to doing the work. I uh, I will just start by saying this. I, I have the privilege of every once in a while getting on the phone with people who have recently signed up for our event or are looking to join some of our coaching programs and we get to have conversations. And I'm always reminded of a couple of things that I just want to share here before we go into um, today's topic, which is one, how this work calls certain beings to it. You know, I, I say like guy and I, I don't know that it's like we're doing something so much as there's this energetic field that calls people, uh, specifically those I find that have done a tremendous amount of personal development work. Mm -hmm. Some of them are even like coaches and, you know, practitioners, mm -hmm. um, like to that level of work. And they're still, you know, it's, it's that conversation we have, like, how am I still fucking dealing with this stuff? Like, how is this stuff? And it's so similar to where Guy and I was, were, so it, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, if as whatever, whatever your soul did to bring you into this community and into these conversations and uh, into this work, I just want to honor that and let you know that it's, it's, it's an amazing life altering uh change when you can when you can be here in this space so Agreed. yeah welcome all so uh if you are brand new to the party you're brand new to the uh, old souls and seekers community uh there's a lot of you guys popping in over the last few weeks we'd love to uh, welcome you feel free to just put new in the comment box um and again if you're in the facebook group that's the primary place where where you'd want to be during this training um, otherwise you may see some of the comments. You may not see some of the comments. We do broadcast it to a few locations, but I just dropped a link in the comment box there that lets you, um, have your name show up in the software as well. So some of you guys can see it says Facebook user. That means you have, uh, are not approved because we can't show your name in a private group on one of these chats, um, unless you approve it. So, um, yeah, so if you're here, uh, hopefully it's because you're here to, uh, to learn, to grow, to explore and get curious, uh, with us. Um, again, if, if you're brand, brand new, Elon and I have been in the personal development space for about 20 years. Um, we have had the privilege honor of coaching tens of thousands of people. Um, many multiples, I think tens of thousands. It's hard to keep track of exactly who and what and where, uh, but that's our best estimate. And, uh, you know, it's been a, it's been a really beautiful ride and a privilege, and uh, we're here every single week at the same time on Tuesdays, eleven a.m. 
Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, to just share with you guys what's what's going on in our lives and what we're working on, and and really kind of give you a uh, the best that we can in terms of explaining like what is the awareness effect, what is it that we actually. Yeah teach here and how does it um why is it distinct and really varies from pretty much anything you'll you'll see out there in the space um it marries a lot of different traditions together um and the reason that we've done that is because we've seen that when you are just studying one tradition just like personal development um and you don't include energy or awareness it's like you're just leaving half the puzzle off the table and so um like elon said they can it can lead to a lot of frustration for people when they have done a lot of work and we get that some of you guys have not done a lot of work, but for those of you guys who have, you know, um, it could be really frustrating when you have a lot of awareness about how all of this works. And yet the things in your life uh, are either not changing, not moving, or you find that there are specific things going on in your life that it's like you, you just get into those same patterns and habits again and again. And you're like, how, how did I get back to this place. Like, why am I still dealing with this when I have all this awareness? And so I wanted to let you guys know that, you know, fundamentally personal development is, is crucial. Like we, we think it's an intricate part of the evolutionary process of, of human beings and of, of how to get yourself centered and integrated into higher states of consciousness and to different paradigms. Like all that is true. However, no matter what awareness you gain with the mind, this is still all dealing with conditioning, with linear ways of thinking. And um, ultimately it's like you're, you're, you're in an experience where you're managing yourself, right? Like that's what personal development is. It's like, here's how it works. Here's how you can manage yourself better, but it still kind of lives in this world of management. And so where we start bridging and it's kind of where we'll talk about today, where we start bridging the paradigm shifts, the, you know, the stories and, you know, Byron Katie's work and Landmark and so many other things that, that do this, Tony Robbins, um, we started looking at um, taking many of the therapies that are taught out there, many of the processes and including energy and awareness into those practices. And that's where we really find the things take off for people and like the magic spontaneity, synchronicity, all the things that um, many of us are looking for in terms of just relieving ourselves of, of really innate deep stresses that human beings live with, we start seeing those patterns fall away and really a new way of living emerging. So we always say, if you're here, it's because um, you are part of wanting to awaken a new consciousness within yourself. You are an early adopter of this new consciousness and this new energy. And, and today's dissertation, if you want to call it that, um, will be focused around um, like disappointment disappointment, and then kind of segueing into looking at, you know, uh, stress, anxiety, uh, overwhelm, and, and stuff like this. And so um, do you want me to start sharing today? Or do you want to kick it off? Um, you know, I just before you start sharing, here's here's the context that I kind of want to create for uh, for everyone else. So we, we were talking about the shift for us and how we found this work also out of a place of frustration, you know, guy and I spent at this point, it's over a million dollars. But, you know, at the time, we, we'd spent probably 15 plus years, uh, maybe just around a million dollars or thereabouts in our education. You know, like we were, they say you put your money where your mouth is like, this is what we were committed to. You know, we and it wasn't the, the first we didn't really start like coaching people uh, and getting paid for coaching people till what was it 2017. We were coaching people in like marketing and stuff like that, but like personal yeah. development, right? Like 2017. So in any event, like we had spent a lot of money to do this work because it was important to us. It wasn't like, oh, I invest in this because of that. And the entire time, and, and see if you can just find yourself in this, the entire time, it's like mm -hmm. there's some feeling that you have that you don't like to feel. Maybe you're impatient, maybe you're angry, maybe you're sad, maybe you're lonely, whatever it is. Like, and, and what you try to do, because you do a lot of mindset work, is you try to understand your way around it. And we got to the point after 15 years of reading all the books and hiring coaches and going to seminars, like as good as our life was, it was this constant game of more understanding, more information, more concepts, more of this. And honestly, 
I'm looking at the same circumstances, the same situations, the same everything. And I'm like, I'm so fucking sick of trying to understand how and why and what and when and all this stuff got created. Like, it's irrelevant. Like, I'm feeling it. So I had this visual thing come through the other day where it's like we talk a lot about the center channel of the body. And the center channel of the body is is a tube, if you will, that's like a conduit for energy. It basically like holds energy in your body. And the more solid, the thicker that is, the more energy and charge you're able to hold, the more intuition you're able to have, the more gifts will come online, the more energy, fulfillment, love you'll be able to express, like all of it, right? And so the visualization that I saw was, it's like we all have the center channel, but all of these traumas that we've had put holes mm -hmm. into this tube. And so we're trying to have all this energy flow through and we see the holes. And instead of like trying to plug the holes, mindset is like, let's figure out how the hole got there. Oh, it was when I was three and mom or dad did this or didn't do this or my sibling or blah, blah, blah. And in an effort, you're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to fix this. And the effort is like, I'm going to put my hand on this hole. Yeah. Plug up the hole. Yeah. But it's like, then there's these hundreds of other ones and you're like, oh, I'll stick my finger here and my other toe there and my nose here. And like, you're trying to contort yourself. But at the end of the day, it just, maybe it works for a little, but it doesn't work. And so the visualization I saw was what we offer here, when you allow yourself to step out of this world of understanding, you can step into the world, which I think is where most people want to be, which is the world of healing. And I don't care how gifted you are, and I don't care how many books you've read and how many seminars you've been to, you cannot have the mind heal the center channel. You, you can be a Harvard PhD four times over, you do not, this mind of yours will not be able to do that. And so the shift gets to happen. This is what we're going to talk about today. It's like the shift gets to happen from giving up this world of more information and more understanding what we kind of call the horizontal transformation and shifting into the world of vertical transformation, which allows the intuitive gifts and healing abilities of your body to actually seal these holes without you having to put your finger there. It's like, like a, the thing that I saw was it's like this energy that moves up and as it's moving up, it's literally sealing these holes. Mm -hmm. And the more holes are sealed, the more you're able to hold that life source. And that's where all the things that you've ever wanted are online, like the relationship, healthy body, right? Cause think about even from a healthy body, right? If there's holes, energy is trying to come through and now energy is leaking. So energy is literally leaking from your body. It doesn't matter how good of food you eat and how much you exercise when the energy and the energy is actually leaking, that's going to create some dis-ease in your body. Yeah. It's like having like unhealthy intestines and you're still eating all the right food, but nothing can get absorbed. That's right. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we just, the shift for us five, six years ago was a shift from, okay, we tried to play the understanding game and acquiring more information and hiring the most expensive coaches and like doing all that kind of stuff. And the simplicity of healing and how you can do it on your own or in a group or with another is like, it takes a while for your brain to get on board because it can't possibly be this easy to have these level of results. But take it from me, take it from Guy and any of our other students who have who have been with us, like it really gets to be that easy when you actually begin to do the the, the right work. Yeah. So yeah, so there's some a little bit of context and background. And and look, if you're just getting going on your personal development journey, and, and how do I know uh people who are just getting going, their their context for life is usually um like they're circ they're at they're at the place of victimhood around their responsibilities and that's a tough thing to sometimes hear when you're in that place but it's like the circumstances are dictating everything you feel like you have no control um you know people are doing something to you 
um, you feel unlucky, like uh, that kind of thing. So it's like, hey, why is this happening to me? Like if that's like the context from which you view life, then fundamentally mindset work is a huge, huge upgrade and breakthrough in the way that you perceive uh, yourself, reality, others, and your role inside of it. And so if you're kind of in that state, mindset work is what I would tell you to focus on. Um, if you've done a lot of mindset work and you're hitting some of those upper upper ceiling thresholds, um, you know, that's really where the energy and awareness work for us um, seems to be imperative. But we're, we're always doing both, to be perfectly honest. Like I still read books on psychology, but I'm, I'm always mindful of what's my alignment in my system as I read them, as I read certain stories in the book, what's happening in my inner space, and then sitting with it. So I'm all for mental architecture. I think it's interesting and philosophically um, valuable, but um, like Elon said, doesn't really do much for the healing aspect. So let's like start focusing the conversation a little bit more around disappointment. And I'll share with you guys like what comes up for me. And, and you know, Elon and I share this a lot. We're, we're born, we're immigrants. We're, we're not even first generation Americans like our kids are. And, and we grew up really poor uh, with, with parents that worked really diligently and really hard, you know, the typical uh, immigrant story. And so like that was the patterning we got at home, right? It's like, don't ask for help do it all yourself. Um, you can't trust other people. Like that was a big one, you know, to like, and it wasn't like you can't trust other people. It was more like you can't trust other people to do the job as good as you. That's what I, I remember thinking like, Oh, we do it better. Like if you want it done right, you do it yourself like that kind of stuff. And so, um, to be frank, like we've built even Satori prime with those fundamentals intact. Like that was what started the company. That's what kept the company going. And and there's a lot of hard work ethic in that, that a lot of people applaud and, you know, think is really wonderful. But there's one thing about like what's happening, right? For all of us, like what's happening in our space, how do other people perceive you? And then there's like your internal experience. And I don't know about you guys, but regardless of what's happening outside of me, it's like, what I really care about is how do I feel about it inside? more than anything in the world. If I'm with my wife, I can, oh, I can, or with my parents or with my brother, and I can say, oh, I love this individual so much. But then like, if I hug my mom and I don't feel connection with my mom and I don't really feel like a resonance of I love you, then they're just words. And there's a part of me that's like, well, where's that connection, right? This is like a deeper part of me. Or like, how come I'm not feeling safe right now? How come I'm not feeling peaceful right now? I have money, I have friends, like, how many times have you heard this story? This was certainly my story where like you have a lot of people around you, a lot of friends, a lot of beautiful people, and you still feel lonely, you know? And then it's kind of confusing. It's like, well, I have all these people around me, but uh, here I am with all of them still feeling lonely, right? So it's like this inner experience that, that each one of us is having is really the place where most of us have not gotten curious about. We're so concerned with our global events, right? And today it's like amplified a million fold because of what's going on and, and how media charged everything is and how politicized everything is. But it's like, but what we really care about is like, hey, as I'm listening to that, there's this horrible feeling in my body, you know, of like not feeling well. And yet I can't seem to look away. I'm, I'm like drawn to this drama, to this thing that's happening out here. And I'm having this internal experience. So I, I want to keep pointing us to our inter internal experience, even as you guys are listening right now, like just take a moment. Let's take a deep breath. Whew, I took one before. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath. If it's useful to close your eyes and just bring, bring the awareness that's here. Notice how, how you localize your awareness behind your eyes. Like when we ask people like, where are you? They inevitably point here. Okay. Some people point at their heart because they're being cute and they're like, I'm heart centered, but it's like, you know, your heart is not helping you cross the street. You know, it's like, you don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't look at the world from your heart. You may have a really open heart. Like I'm not denying that some people are very heart centered human beings, but it's like, we still organize up here. We evaluate from up here. We presume from up here. We get in trouble because of what this thing presumes, right? All these things. So like for right now, like check that out. And then just like somehow, some way without me telling you how, Drop some awareness towards your body, like towards the center channel. And, and just in that simple thing of dropping some awareness, you might still notice it, some up here. You might even feel like a toggling happening, like I'm up here, down here, up here, down here. That's fine. But like, just come down here and see if you can notice even a subtle qualitative shift and how you begin experiencing yourself and even your room or the space around you when you're not all here. 
Okay. Cause regardless of everything I say now, everything Elon says, like when we're here, what we're part of is, is just listening from through our conditioning. Okay. This is like a computer terminal and the conditioning we put into it is like the software that runs on the hardware. Once the software is in for most people, it's very hard to uninstall the software or to even really upgrade it, to be honest. And so you see everything through that software, through that perspective, through that worldview, through the conditioning. And this is not a conditioning you chose. It was a conditioning that was imposed upon you or that you picked up through perception. And that's why, again, like go read some comment boxes today about some hot topic issues. And you're not going to see people going like, oh yeah, let me change my mind about that. They're, they're fighting tooth and nail because the internal experience that they're having when somebody else has a different point of view is, is that you are attacking my reality. That doesn't feel safe. So let me get in defense. Let me attack back. Okay. Right. Very like we see it every single day. So I want to talk to you guys about disappointment. Like how many of you guys find yourself? And again, just see if you can maintain awareness in the body, even as you're listening. That's my challenge to you today. Okay. And just, and, and again, it might feel like a toggling, but keep bringing you with your focus, bring your awareness back towards your body. <clears throat> so I want to talk to you guys about disappointment. Like how many of you guys find yourself in these cycles of disappointment? Say I in the chat box. Okay. And, and I'll say for me, again, with the stories of background of being an immigrant, that that's what I started noticing in my system is that like I get into partnerships, you know, like business partnerships or anything it could be like circumstantial. Like for example, um, <laughs> I just organized a surprise party for my wife this past weekend for her 35th birthday. And two days before that, through a chain of weird, wild events, um, she was in here meditating on that chair right behind me. And my son wanted to grab a pen that we use to mark a calendar for his school days now. He's uh, almost three years old. And he reached over my keyboard and with his like forearm or something, touched the keyboard. And my screen turned on. It like woke up my computer. And on my screen was my WhatsApp, like my WhatsApp application. And that was a thread that I was organizing my wife's surprise party on. And because she was sitting here early in the morning with the lights turned off, when the screen turned on, it illuminated the room. She looked over and it said, Manny's surprise party in big letters. And lo and behold, my wife found out that I'd been organizing a surprise party for her for six weeks at that time. Right. So, like, disappointment, <laughs> you know, like it hits the system pretty hard. And, so I just want us to like check out disappointment because, you know, how many of you guys are like me where you are kind of like this eternal optimist? Like I am a very optimistic person. I'm very hopeful, not when I'm disappointed, but most of the time. <laughs> right. And so something I just want to like show you how strange these patterns are, because most of the time when we're in like in a pattern, we're like, OK, this is where I'm at right now. But we don't see like when the dominoes started falling that led to this internal experience that we're having. And so we think we're like, when we think we're focusing on the problem, oftentimes we're like way off from what's really going on, okay? And so I'm sitting with my teacher and I'm explaining to him all these different circumstances that have been going on. And as I check on this feeling of disappointment, and that's what I want you to check too, like check, your, check out your feeling, right? Like check out anything that's disappointing you out right now. I know that might be a little edgy to check it out, but like you're in a safe space, check it out. And check out how that feels in your system. And the question I have for you is, is this new? Is this a new type of disappointment? Or have you felt this before countless times? And if you have felt it countless times, like just kind of like let your, your, your energy, your mind wander back through your life, maybe even into your childhood, and see if you can find that same resonating energy like all the way back. Because when I looked at this energy for me, what I found is like, it literally stymies back to feeling unsafe as a child. And I remember thinking to myself, like wanting reprieve from God, like things like, please come save me from this experience, like that kind of thing. And like, of course, nothing shows up, right? <laughs> because that's not how that, that works. But in the mind of a child, it's like parents are outside of me. That's the authority, that's the God. And so our perception, we personify spirit as this like father mother figure out there that's supposed to come and like wrap their arms around you and protect you and keep you safe. And of course it doesn't work that way. So then we, in my, in my perception, I, I started feeling abandoned. Like there was like an abandonment energy in there. Okay. But here was like over kind of a revelation to me because what we always want to do is when we identify the pattern, we want to, we want to see like, 
when did it start? Like, is there an energy? Is there something that I say that can allow me to know that I'm in a pattern right now? And not so that I can figure it out, but so I can actually learn how to sit with myself in awareness while that's happening. Okay, because that's the most important part. And so I'm sitting there with my teacher and he says, have you ever noticed that hope is part of your pattern? And that was a little bit, huh, come again? Right, because it seems like hope is what I'm feeling when I'm not in the pattern. Say again? Como say what? Yeah, like como say what? Like my brain was like, er, like, you know, hit the emergency brake. But because to me, it's like, again, we see the world in binary. We see the world in duality. So it's like, I'm either in hope or I'm in disappointment, but it doesn't even feel like there's a relationship between the two. But he goes, have you noticed that the pattern actually begins when you're in hope? And as I kind of like looked at it, I'm like, yeah, that is what happens to me. I get into these like relationships, business relationships, other things, you know, whatever it might be, you kind of map your own thing. And then of course you're like, oh my God, like this is amazing. Da, da, da. And then it's like this happy dance starts happening up here and it gets really attached to stuff because it really wants some kind of outcome, right? That's going to feel really, really good. And then of course, there's a certain energy that I carry in my body that is like looping me in this old disappointment. And as long as that disappointment continues to loop in my body energetically, kind of like what Elon was talking about earlier, the reality that I'm sourcing is going to ultimately bring in that experience of disappointment. It's like setting yourself up for failure, basically, right? So it's like almost like disappointment is using hope as a backdoor to fulfill its purpose, like this, this pattern in my system. And so whatever pattern you have in your system, like it's pretty much a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. And so what is there to do about that? Well, the first thing is like now for me, and again, you can look for yourself, like what it looks like. And like, where does it really start when I get into a process, into a relationship, into a partnership, like, you know, and then it goes sideways. Like, where did I, where did I really start getting attached to how this was going to happen? Because for us, like manifestation for it to be like pure and good and not pull you in either direction of like being attached to it or trying to avoid it. It actually has to be agendaless. When we create from an agendaless place is when you see magic happen for people. But when I have hope, there's, there is an agenda. I have an agenda. I have an agenda that's going to work out. And so what do we, what do we want to do with these kind of patterns? Because of course, like I'm not saying by the way, guys, not to be hopeful. Just want to be super clear about that. Hope, wonderful attribute. However, the difference is, the difference here is, is that no matter what we're experiencing, there's either experiencing it from our conditioned mind, right? And I can experience hope from my conditioned mind. There is a conditioning that I have around hope. Or I can drop into my system, be in my alignment and experience and observe hope and experience hope that way. And that would be hope that doesn't have these kind of conditioned attachments into them. Okay. So look, inevitably, disappointment is going to be part of our lives. Not everything is going to meet expectations. Has anybody noticed this? Like, am I, am I the only one on this one? Like, you know, life oftentimes does not meet expectations. It's that old, uh, that old saying, uh, man plans and God laughs, right? And so part of it is like, notice when the disappointment comes, how do you internally respond? Are you like, yay, disappointment? Or are you like, get away from me? Not again. Why me? I can't believe this is happening. Everybody fucks me over. They can't be trusted. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Fill in the blank. Okay. And all of that is part of the conditioning and rationale of like not being with the very real fact that you are now experiencing disappointment. Your little boy or little girl is back in that place where God, mom, dad didn't show up. You don't feel taken care of. You don't feel safe. And that's really what's at play. You know, you can, again, you can rationalize it until you're blue in the face. You can change the story. You can empower yourself. You can listen to motivational things. And all that would be bypassing the actual experience that you're having internally. Something hits your nervous system. Something hits your energetic body. You get a collapse inside the system. And the mind frantically tries to figure out what's going on to fix it. And it can't do it. It just can't do it. And so maybe you like do things like you drink or, you know, your other avoidance patterns or you get into some other addictions and, you know, after a few days it passes, but like, guess what? The pattern's still in the system and it's rinse, rinse cycle, repeat. It's going to happen all over again. 
So what again, so what what begins to resolve this? What begins to untangle this web? Right? And and it's two things. Uh, number one is learning how to sit with your own system and not be so much in the experience as as observing the experience from a neutral place. Okay. How do you do that? Well, how do you do that is we have the meditations inside the group that you guys can find in the welcome post. And the meditation that we do, uh, the first one you can download is called the active healing meditation. It's roughly 30 minutes long. That will train you in the how, right? Um, so I'm not going to get into the how here, but essentially it's, again, notice how we started the session today. It's notice you're here in this mind localized. And then notice you can also choose to drop down and bring your awareness elsewhere into your body, for example. And you're going to start noticing that as you do that, if you're subtly aware of energy, that you're there's almost like a settling in the body. It's like a like a sigh, like a huh, when you drop into your body. You might even notice that you suddenly take a deep breath, like as if you weren't really breathing well before. And it's just because you're bringing awareness here, and it's again, it like settles you because you're a little bit less in the conditioning of the mind, and so the system can actually start relaxing. So what we train on, this is what we do in our two day. Um, uh, in our two-day live event, which we'll invite you to again at the end of this uh, presentation here, um, is how do you actually ha go and begin not living your entire life in here, but actually learn how to go into higher states in order to heal yourself. And the reason this works and works extremely well is because normally when people do any type of therapy, they're still doing the therapy from their mind. They're still trying to understand the mind is still what is watching. And so the mind is actually merged with this part in the system, this part that got hurt, this part that's disappointed, this part that's feeling anxiety, this part that's feeling depression, overwhelm, whatever. And so when we do that, the only thing that happens is we're actually in reenactment, right? It's like you're literally reenacting from the part and you're seeing it and you're looping in the energy. What ends up happening for people and how resolution and healing actually happens is you actually come out of the mind, you unmerge from the part, and instead of reenactment in the system, you let that sensation arise, like that disappointment be here, and you just watch, you just observe, okay? And you just observe because the system, your body, has an intelligence and it just knows what to do with it. But when we watch from the conditioning, we compress it, we like we put pressure on it. And, and you'll see it actually feels like a collapse that's happening in the system or like a tightening and the, and they can't go anywhere. And it literally gets stuck in the system like bad food that's not going anywhere. Okay. The other part that, that is really, really beneficial to human systems is that biologically we are built for connection. We got to have it. Like, you know, for those of us who feel isolated or alone, you know, depression and suicide is not probably that far off right? Like the worst thing we can do to people in prison is put them in isolation. And this is why it's because we are biologically built for connection. So some of the healing modalities that we practice um, at the intuitive mind event that's coming up um, is, is how do you sit with another person and get like their awareness on you in a very specific way that allows for your system to get support ground and feel authentic connection. And again, this might seem like, why would we do that? But I, I want to bring you again, always back to the way that you were a child. Because a child like knows what he, what he or she needs innately. No one has to teach the child that they want connection from mom or if they want connection from dad. Like you don't have to sit there and explain to a child, like it'd be good if we had connection. The child's constantly looking for connection. But as we become adults, we think that our system somehow works differently than it did when we were children. And it doesn't. So one of the ways that we downregulate our nervous system as children is we actually leverage and connect with our parents and we learn through their system how to actually soothe our own nervous system. A child literally does not know how to soothe their own nervous system in the beginning. They learn it de facto through an energy exchange with the parents. Now, if you're a type of parent who is hyperactive, in disappointment, in anxiety, in overwhelm and stress, guess what? Your kids are, are stress response beings, essentially. They're, I'm sorry, they're, they're energy response beings. So whatever energy you're in, if you're ungr ungrounded, the child's going to be ungrounded. And then if you respond to them from an ungrounded place, like, hey, please listen to me. You're, you're amplifying the energy and you're amplifying the energy in their system. Also, they get even crazier, right? And then it's like, why can't I control my fucking kids? Well, it's like, they're just responding to your energetic body. That's pretty much what's going on. If you can't calm yourself down, you can't soothe your system. They can't either. That's pretty much what happens. So it's the same thing when we're adults. 
if you never got that information growing up and you're like a high anxiety person, guess what? Like your body doesn't actually have the information how to downregulate and soothe itself. And so you still need another person who has regulated themselves to help you get co-regulated. Has not changed at all from when you were a baby or a little boy or a little girl. And that's why it's so important to work with, with teachers, right? Like people like me and Elon, we have teachers, right? Who constantly help us co-regulate our nervous system when it gets unregulated. When we go into patterns of disappointment, when we go into patterns of stress and anxiety and stuff like that, because it's not like you guys get this. It's not like one layer of disappointment. You're not like, okay, got that layer, like disappointments out of my life, got that layer of anxiety, like this anxiety is out of my life. That layer of disappointment can get resolved. But of course it's like, you're a human, like things are going to arise in your system that are going to make you feel attacked or stressed out or anything like that. And that's the whole point is like, when you start building a system around you, and this system has to have other people who are all learning how to regulate their own nervous system, their energy bodies. And this ultimately is what soothes the mind. Okay. You don't have to learn how to soothe your mind. Like it's always going to respond to whatever is happening in here. If it's not quiet in here, it's not going to be quiet up here. That's just what's so. So, you know, basically the mind is always responding to what you're energetically feeling. But most people, again, are constantly dealing with their external circumstances, not noticing that their body is like in a high tension, pressurized state. And so what we really want to learn is to how do we decrease that pressure? How do we work with our awareness and really use your innate, the same innate that, by the way, knows how to uh, fix a cut when your fingers, uh, you know, when you get a cut in your finger, you don't have to sit there and tell mentally what your body to do. It just knows what to do. And so we're really leveraging the same thing when it comes to healing work. It's we're actually just letting the body go through its paces. And so when there's disappointment arising, notice again that most people go into an avoidance pattern or into a depressed pattern, and they're not actually being with the experience. They're just trying to change the experience. And the body's like, but I'm trying to help. I want to get through this. And you're like, no, I'm going to go grab a drink, you know? And, and, that's, and this is where people get stuck. So it's really, really, really so much about learning practices that help you regulate your body. And, and this is not a one and done thing. It's, it's, a, it's an ongoing practice, just like Elon always says, you can't eat one salad a week and get a six pack. You can't go to the gym one day a week and, and suddenly be physically fit. Like when people go on crash diets, you might lose some weight, but you gain it right back because it doesn't work. You're not, you're not, you're not changing your lifestyle. You've, you're doing something extreme for five to 10 days. And, and honestly, for most people, that's how they approach their spirituality and personal development. Yeah, I'll do that weekend retreat. And they think like, oh, because I did an intensive, like my whole life's going to change. Yeah, you may learn the skills there about how to make that change. But if you don't apply that into your life on a regular basis, then you're really going to struggle with it. You know, you might get a big pop and then you're going to see the patterns kind of bring yourself back. So it's really about learning the skills and then building the systems, which is what we've we've done here is like we basically like plug you into the systems that we've built here so that you can get your constant practices in co-regulation. And then you can start like layer after layer after layer after layer after layer after layer, you know, going through disappointment, anxiety, stress, and overwhelm. And then you're suddenly going to realize it takes a lot more, you know, three, four or five months from now, it's going to take a lot more to push you into a state of dysregulation than it did six months before. Now imagine doing that for many years and suddenly you're living your life in a regulated state. You come out of a fight or flight response. You found yourself grounded in your system and then maybe something happens, but instead of being like, boom, you like big experience and like you start talking badly to people around you because you're in that panic state, that fear state, you don't do all those things and you don't cause, you don't just have regulation in here, but you don't cause dysregulation out here. You suddenly have a much more harmonious reality that you live in. And I could tell you when it comes to manifestation, when it comes to creating what you want, just imagine for yourself, like, who do you think is the person that's manifesting things easily? Who do you think is the person that's making good choices in their life? Who do you think is having um, deep, meaningful relationships? The person that is in a constant state of dysregulation, acting from fight or flight response, where everything is me versus you, or the person who learned how to regulate their system, 
spends a lot of time in a state of harmony and peace inside their system, long periods of well-being and, you know, making choices, relationships like, you know, who, who seems to have the better life. And, and for us, the final thing I'll say here is, is like our, our belief, our experience has been is that our reality, what we call reality is basically like an organic hologram that's in a relationship with you. And what it's really relating to, like people think it's the thoughts that you have, but like, you know, the thoughts come way later. Like first I have an experience in my body. Then the mind looks and tries to explain what's happening, but it's doing it through its conditioning. So if you're like, oh, let me manage my thoughts and that will change my reality. Not really, because it's like what's what really is resonating. Yeah, there's a resonance energy in your head, but like we know that the heart puts out way more energy than anything your mind does. Way more, right? Like it's a huge field around your heart, huge field around around the chakra systems and center channel. So it's like when this is in regulation, you got to imagine like how the waves come out. And if they're like really chaotic waves, like what is it that you're vibrating into your reality? And this organic hologram is going to mirror back to you whatever the sensation is that's happening in here at the level of frequency and energy. It's going to just mirror that plain and simple. It's going to bring people into your life. You're going to be like, oh my God, there's that person doing that thing to me again. And that's, it's all, it's all like this reality is trying to communicate the level of regulation you have in your system. So what you naturally see is as people become more regulated, the reality itself reshapes itself, right? It harmonizes itself, if you want to call it that, with the resonant frequency of your body. And that's why we believe that like learning to regulate, co-regulate with other people, because you're always going to be in this world with other people. I don't know if you know this, but there's like 8 billion of us out there with 8 billion different versions of reality and 8 billion people basically trying to convince 8 billion other people that they have the perfect version of reality. Like it's insanity. And so if, if, if we are going to keep living in a world where the only way that we try to create inner safety is having people agree with me, having people think like me, act like me or feel like me, which is by the way, most people's strategies on planet earth right now, Again, go look at your comment boxes, like three rows down about, you know, your uncle who's against vaccines and your aunt who's pro vaccines and like read their comment boxes. You're going to see like, it's just, everyone is just trying to find safety. Everyone is trying to figure out how to co is how to regulate their systems. That's all that's happening. You want to understand what's happening on social media. You want to understand what's happening at the level of government. Every system on the planet is trying to create safety in their own way. Period. End of story. And we all have different ways of doing that based on the experiences that we had, how our system is organized, and the beliefs that we have. That's it. And it doesn't matter how much you scream from the rooftops about what you believe, no one gives a shit. <laughs> no one out there gives a shit. They're, they have been living in that reality since the day they were born. You are not going to convince them it's other than the way that they see it. So if you want to change, if you want to see big changes, not just internally, but in society, then it's about the individual learning how to soothe and calm their system, how to bring safety and cultivate well-being in here. Once that happens, you're going to notice that everything around you starts shifting that way. Even the people in your life, your kids, your spouses, people at work, suddenly everyone's going to be just a little bit easier around you because when we're in a pattern and we're in defense, I don't care what you think about what you, the little lies that you tell or the, the parts of the story that you emit from people, human beings are energetic beings. Whether you think you're sensitive or not, we are all energetic beings and we feel stuff. Like even when somebody tells us something, we're like, mm, that, that feels a little bit off. Something about that is not quite right. A part of you knows, a part of you always knows. And that's, that's just evolution. That's biology. That's just how we're organized. So it's this more than anything in the world can dramatically change the type of reality you're experiencing, the type of uh, relationships you're having. And like Elon said, even at the level of personal health, like your body can't, if your body can't regulate, it's not getting nutrients the same way as somebody who's regulated. Um, it's holding on to weight perhaps as a means of trying to protect organs or your physical body, literally like putting more distance between you and the world, stuff like that. And so people don't look at it, like, why am I struggling with my weight so much? Well, it's like, the body's trying to protect itself in a certain way. And if you're not regulated, it's very difficult for the body to change its uh, biology and physiology as well. So whew. it's a lot, it's a lot. So is there any, uh, any, any questions on any of that, you know, or any, anything you guys want to share 
about that. Like I'm, I'm dropping the dropping the hammer pretty hard here today. And it's because like, it's just time, you know, like we, we're in this place in society right now where we are being highly pressurized as a society. And of course it's going to cause a lot of pressurization in our system. And that might seem like, fuck the world's coming to an end, but at the, or I say, and that's not my perspective at the same time. It's like when we're put into a pressure cooker like this, it's the, it's the most incredible time to learn, grow, transform and evolve. Because literally the entire hologram right now is like, Hey, check it out. You know, like it, it, it almost makes you that you you're like forced to look within at this period of time. And some people will, and some people won't like, I, I'm clear about that for many people though, these years, when we look back, we're going to be like, wow, that was a, an incredible time of accelerated growth in our society. Like this will pass guys. You know, this is not, this is not going to be forever end all be all this will pass. Cool. Anything you want to share? Add? Uh, no. Okay. Um, so guys, we'll look if there's any questions, but, um, that's pretty much like what I wanted to bring through today. If you're, if you're curious about the work that we're doing here, right? Like I, I'm trying to lay it out for you in a way that the mind can consume what it is that I'm talking about. The reality though is, is that like this, this stuff that I'm talking about is learned in one way only one way only. And that's through direct experiencing period. You cannot learn this in the book. It is written in books. I've read the books. I thought I knew what they were talking about. I didn't. I didn't until I really started being in the practice. It's like it's like the difference between reading about dribbling a basketball and you're like, okay, I know you slap the ball with your hand, <laughs> like, huh. you know, and actually like dribbling the basketball with your fingers and like you know, obviously there's varying degrees of of skill at which people can dribble a ball or anything else, playing an instrument or anything else. Like you can't. You can't learn about it by reading about it. There, there has to be some somatic experience that you're having that can help you be like, oh, and I, again, I want to point out, this is exactly how you learned when you were a child. You were there, you were having an experience and mom and dad pointed at something and they said, frog, red, box, <laughs> you know, they pointed at it so that in your awareness, your awareness recognized, oh, box, oh, red, <laughs> oh, frog, right? This is no different. There is a, there's a whole level of subtle awareness that certainly Western minded people have not been conditioned into at all. Like we have zero awareness that there's this whole other energetic field of subtle awareness that's happening all around us and in us and all this kind of stuff. And when you start looking at it, you're like, oh my God, there is this whole other world. No one has pointed me at. And what Elon and I have been able have been trained to do and we've been training ourselves to do is to become highly aware of the subtle energetic space. Okay, it's like the six, you're, it's almost like your sixth sensory perception, if you want to call it that. Okay, it's a whole other way to experience life, whole other way to experience the world, whole other way to experience yourself and others. And so the way that we get into this is we do practices that unmerge you from your local mind, go into higher states of consciousness, and then Elon and I, when we're there with you, we'll start pointing at stuff: frog, tree, box. Can you feel that? Can you notice this quality? And that's how you start mapping it in your own system. It's just single little pointers. We call it glimpse practices. The moment you glimpse it, you can't unsee it, right? Like think about the moment you noticed a color for the first time and you and your mind went blue, blue, blue forever. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't change. It doesn't suddenly become purple or anything else. Blue, now that's blue, right? Blue forever. And so this is the same way. You point at it and the mind goes, oh, interesting. And it, gets, it starts getting curious. And again, this is a vast, literally infinite space field to explore. And so life also gets really exciting because suddenly you're like, wow, it's like being a kid again, where it's like there's a whole new way to explore literally everything around you from the most mundane to the most exciting. I always tell people like there's no boredom with awareness. I don't care if you're sitting all by yourself in a dark room, you go inside and it's like a video game turns on. And, and you are this beautiful, expansive thing that's constantly shifting and moving and, and having experiences and things are coming in and out of your awareness. And it just becomes exciting to be alive. Not because the circumstances are exactly the way you want them to be, although that's nice, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but it's just like, holy crap, like there's a whole world in here for me to explore, dance with and play with. And suddenly it's like, okay, every free minute you have, instead of reaching for the phone, and reading the next stupid fucking headline that scares the shit out of you, suddenly your priority in life becomes like sitting with yourself. What, what's, the, what's the news of the day inside? 
what's, what's happening in my internal experience. Okay, so if you guys want to um, participate, if you guys want to have a direct experience, let me let me find this thing for you. Mm, doo -doo -doo. Okay, here we go. So if you want to join us, um, it's not too late, but what we're going to say is that we really urge you whenever you're watching this, whether right now live or on the replay today, uh, and, you, and you're like, yes, I want to do this, go buy your ticket right now. Uh, it's intuitivemind.live, and I'll tell you why. Because the moment you purchase your ticket, we're going to send you uh, your login information, credentials, membership access, and there's pre-training. It's about six hours of pre-training that we that is really highly, strongly recommended before you attend the event. Now, you can come to the event without it. However, you're going to get way more value, way more value if you watch the training before coming. Okay. So again, the moment you buy your ticket, you're going to get this pre-training. It's going to be a membership area. It's all broken down into like modules and there's practices in there and certain things we explain about how this all works. And that way, when you come to the two-day event, we just go, we go into experiences. We're like right into the direct experience so that you can get the most of like just mapping, 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 like how this all works and how you can start applying it into your life. And, and that's really what starts making the change. Okay. So uh, there's amazing testimonials on there. Please go watch them. So you're not just taking it from our word of mouth, but it's amazing. Um, and um, yeah, so that, that's why you definitely want to get the ticket today. If you are like brand new or you're still kind of like, mm, I'm not so sure I want to have a conversation with someone before I make a decision. It's perfectly fine. We totally get it. We're basically asking you to stare into the unknown. <laughs> so we understand that that's going to bring stuff up in your system. Um, if you want to talk to someone from our team, all you got to do is put contact me in the comment box below. And our team scours these uh, boxes. We look for anybody who's basically raising their hand and saying they want support. They'll reach out to you. You guys can either chat about it on uh, Facebook Messenger or um, set up a free 15 minute call and just get all your questions answered and then see if it's a good fit for you. Okay. So those are kind of the, uh, the avenues to go down. Let's see if there's anything on the chat box here. Yeah. So, you know, just to kind of bring that in. Uh, I'm not sure who said that. Oh, Libby. Gotcha. So yeah, Libby wrote, uh, I've recently read that we and everything is actually energy. Uh, how do we tangibly access this? So I'll do Elon's favorite demo. Uh -huh. So, you know, you guys may know this individual. His name is Nikola Tesla, kind of a smart guy. We have electricity because of him. And he wrote, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, Think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And I just want to clarify with that, like he's not saying like, go get your mind right. You know, he's basically saying that the, the mystery of who we are is in the energy, frequency, and vibration. And so uh, Libby, you know, to kind of what we've been talking about here is in a sense, I don't want to say the answer, but an answer is becoming, is opening up your awareness coming out of the localized conditioned mind, stopping to see our reality as linear, because it's not, it's multidimensional, it's sporadic. And, and again, this is all conditioning that we see things this way, right? And the moment you start becoming aware of subtle energy, you're gonna start noticing all the frequency vibrations and energy that's passing through your body. And what you'll start noticing is that what we call trauma, okay? Like what people are stuck with, it's ironic that we use the word stuck, because it's really just bound up, it's stuck energy inside our biophysical suit, it's stuck in here. That's why it's like you'll people will get like the same pain over and over again, or like a, a certain organ will hurt over and over again. A lot of times, this is psychosomatic in nature, meaning it's mental and energetic, right? And it's just bound up energy. And so, what they're experiencing is the compression, or the squeezing, or the tension that comes along in our energy body when it when we're getting triggered, when that part gets hit. So it's not you that gets triggered, it's a part of you that gets triggered. And when that part gets triggered, it's like it hijacks the system and becomes your view, but it's not you. And so what we want to work with is the part where the bound energy is, okay? And again, we do, we access this through awareness. We learn how to sit with it. And again, just like your finger, knows how to suture itself up naturally, your body actually knows how to resolve the energy and loosen it up. However, most of us are viewing or experiencing what we're viewing from the conditioned mind. And so the conditioning is to just loop in the energy again. It just doesn't let it go. It, it actually bounds the energy and spins it and just keeps it going and going and going and going. 
and then we we reach for something outside of ourselves because we're like, well, in order to get out of this experience, I need another stimulus. When when in reality, the way out is actually into it, is allowing for it to express itself completely, but not from the conditioned mind, from awareness, just what we call what Michael Singer calls the seat of awareness. And when we go into the higher state, the the resolution is natural. It just it's an innate ability for your body just to clear it and move it. When the energy moves out of the system, right? So now it's no longer bound. This part of you can relax. And what happens is the mind, which is checking all the time, right? It's like a safety protocol that's checking what's happening in the system, has no stimulus to respond to in the body. And so it just calms down, relaxes, and there's no, there's no program to run, so to speak. And so now instead of trying to habitually change our mind, which is extraordinarily energy inefficient, right? Like trying to like, okay, I have this habit. Let me try to build another habit. But the thing is like the habits that you have right now, you've done them hundreds of thousands of times, maybe millions of times throughout your life. So when you realize I'm in a habit to like create a new habit, like, okay, like you're going to have to go do that (laughs) hundreds of thousands of times, you know, millions of times. Um, I want to, I wanted to say like, I read a study a while back that said for like a ball player, like a professional ball player, you know, who's like swinging a bat or throwing a ball, if they want to change their movement, like Tiger Woods did this, like he changed his swing because he realized as he got older, he wouldn't be able to use that same swing for a professional ball person, right? This is a person who's mastered their body in a certain way to change, to begin changing a habitual motion they do with their body is a minimum of three to 10,000 reps, minimum three to 10,000 times. So imagine throwing a ball 10,000 times before your body starts recognizing that there's a new habit for somebody who is not professional athlete it's 30 to 50,000 times because they have a much lower level of awareness of their body, right? So that would make sense. They would have to go through a lot more reps to change that motion. So think about that physiologically, think about that emotionally, the amount of times you felt disappointment or anxiety that that energy is looped. You're not going to rehabituate it by going, oh, I caught it this time. Let me do that. Like that might work once in a while. Right. And you're like, oh, good. And then you're like, you should, you should be patting yourself on the back. Like that was awareness, but it's all, you're still trying to manage the conditioning and, and there's, that's an important part of the evolution, but it doesn't help resolve it. What we find is really important with, with having a foundation of mindset. And then I'll wrap it up with this is that once you have big psychosomatic energetic experiences having the mindset piece helps you not revert back it helps you with integrating new processes and putting them into the into the hologram into your reality through through functional practices that we have learned from you know neuroscience and psychology and all these things for many many years that do work again once it's resolved from the system then it's like hey how do i reflect this in action in my reality but for people who don't have that piece They'll have big experiences and then like their mind will kind of like reach back and bring in the past into the present kind of situation. So it really is important to do both. Um, But again, like this, this energetic piece that I've been talking about here is, is massive. So again, guys, um, highly encourage you guys, if this is lighting you up, if you're interested, um, come to the event intuitivemind.live or I am ticket.live. I think either one will take you there. Um, Go watch the testimonials, check it out. Let us know if you have any questions again, by, commenting, uh, contact me in the box below. And, you know, thank you for being here today. We hope this was uh, valuable and insightful for you. And uh, we'll see you back here next Tuesday. Bye, everybody.